need to understand how bad these deaths are increasing in order for us to turn those policy levers and knobs at the right speed in the right direction. That we need to understand reliably uh, how many people are dying as a result of the COVID-19 epidemic and at what time and at what age they're dying. There's no point making policy now on COVID-19 mortality data four or five or six weeks ago. You need mortality data from the last week and you need it by age, you need it by sex and you need it to be reliable. somewhere between 70 to 120 percent more people than the official figures of confirmed COVID-19 deaths in hospitals. We can see that already. Unless we monitor this epidemic cleverly and comprehensively by looking at all of the deaths that COVID-19 is causing, we are going to seriously underestimate it. that it's likely to increase the risk of major vascular diseases, heart failure, ischemic heart disease, stroke. We're seeing increasing evidence of that. So road traffic evidence may have gone the other direction and gone down because there's been fewer people circulating. And same with asthma or acute respiratory diseases because pollution's gone down. But on the other hand, you might have mental health conditions, particularly suicide, that could well have increased. Uh, also, health system failures, really fragile, vulnerable health systems, have they gotten worse? And hence they're not offering these essential treatments for HIV, TB, malaria, or even uh, ischemic heart disease or stroke, and people are dying. Those are the sorts of unpacking that we will need to do as policy analysts very, very soon in order for us to fully understand how COVID-19 raised mortality.